person if you'd like to say something um, outside of the audience of citizens we'll see make sure that you're a subject matter expert um, and if anybody causes a ruckus or is disrespectful either in zoom or in the uh, office here we will ask you to leave so um, and when you raise your hand or if you'd like to talk Please give us your name and address. And saying that, our second order of business, please join me in a pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So I'd like to make a motion. I move to approve the agenda as presented. Can I? Are there appointments that could be added, or is that after wait till you get applications? I think for the uh, HVAC committee, and there was interest on the uh, Hop River committee. I don't know if you been notified no but if you get us the forms that are filled out we'll put them on the next board second meeting so okay. everybody can see their background and, but they can they're welcome to come to the meetings in the meantime okay wouldn't you say i think correct we have a form we do we have an official applicant form okay anybody else all those in favor of the agenda Aye. Aye. Thank you. I move to approve the board of select and regular meeting minutes for February 7th, 2023. At January 17th, I don't have to work. What? Not February 7th. Not February 2nd. Good catch. Yeah. <laughs> I heard that. I'm working for that right now. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Nick, Nick, Nick. He's still out of vacation. Never been. I know. He hasn't been put me in charge. <laughs> Disaster. This happens. Other than that correction, anybody, anything else? 
while she fixes that and gets it out to us. Um, so the motion is to approve with the correction. I amend it with the correction of the date to read Tuesday, February 17th. February 7th. February 7th. Yeah, it's, it's a long, long minute. It's a long minute. It's not just the right date. Steve, why don't you circle back on it? We'll take a look for now. Yeah, it's the wrong minute. Well, it's definitely the wrong minute. Or the agenda's wrong. I don't know. Moving on. I'm sorry. Audience of citizens. Anybody for anything that, that's not on the agenda tonight, or would like to speak? If you're not, a, don't know if you're a subject matter expert. Uh, nobody's in the chat requesting. Okay, very good. Uh, are these the correct minutes then? As you were given? Yes. This is February 7th. Thank you. So the minutes. Our agenda is correct. We just have wrong minutes. Okay. So everybody has a copy of the correct one? Discussion. So there was a motion. Let me read. I, I'm going to um, go my last motion. And I'll read motion. I make a motion to approve the regular meeting agenda minutes for the Columbia Board of Selectmen Tuesday, February 7th, the year 2023. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Aye. Thank you. Great. So here we are. Uh, budget work time. First up, 2023-24 budget review. Department of Public Works. Uh, we have Director of Public Works, Beth Blunt, with us. Um, you want to go through what you're looking at and what we're looking at? So I'll start with the operating budget for the public works department. Before you do, we'd like to follow along. So where am I looking? Yes, thank you. Um, department 410. Thank you. I got it. Okay. 10 of 31. Thank you. Okay. So the majority of the line items are staying um, the same as last year with the exception of three. Contracted services are going up because the catch basin cleaning, there's been an increase and also their herbicide application. So that line item went up a total of $3,480. Um, as well, the repair and maintenance line item needed to be increased because the price of treated salt has increased as well. So. I put an increase in of $4,548. And then the last item that increased was our professional development. Increased at $500. We have some OSHA training that we need to complete for the employees. Okay, you said there's three items. There's four listed here. I heard you mm -hmm. kind of covered three. So contracted services, we understand. Repairs and maintenance. And professional development. Okay, well, buildings, grounds repair, and maintenance went up twenty two hundred dollars. Yep. Yes. I can answer that. A third work that we had set aside that might have moved over to conservation. I have to double check, but that was to put like a guardrail at the Hop River. And that should move to conservation. Yeah, and there was a two hundred dollar item 
Um, so we'll pull that out of that and we have to discuss conservation later. We just had a meeting on that tonight, so I have the latest conservation. Yeah, later. so that's going to get moved. And okay, that's fine. Right. So I have a question about the treated salt. Yes. Treated salt for a rose in the wintertime? Correct. Um, if we continue on this path, does the salt we have over there just stay there throughout the summer and everything, right? Right, it stays mixed. Um, we haven't purchased, normally we purchase 450 tons. Um, we've only purchased 300 this year. And I don't anticipate we'll have to buy anymore. So there will be leftover. But, but how much leftover, we don't know. Okay. And I wouldn't want to just order the remaining and have it sit because the price right now is high, but you never know. It could drop. I didn't want to buy it at its highest. It's been at Thank you. 10 years. So you're so this is because it's high. You're anticipating or you don't know what the price is going to be. So you're increasing it by 2200 for next Correct. Does this include utilities and stuff in the new building? No, I think that falls under electrical. That would be up your line under electrical. We'll have to review that one. I'll have to review that. Yeah, because that's going to cost a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. For the new building. Shut the lights off in the old part of it. Then maybe not. <laughs> the solar, right? Okay, uh, good point though, thank you. Um, yeah. Fuel line, no issues in fuel line, huh? No, I don't see that the, the price will go up we go locked in, correct? It will possibly go up, in, go up in October. That's when the contract ends. So right now, um, I didn't change any of the fuel because I wanted to see what the usage looked like based on what we budgeted this year. Right now, it's holding, we're doing pretty well through the winter, but um, I had increased it last year a little bit. Mm -hmm. So that has to be reviewed then. Okay. For all lines. When can we, if, if prices drop for some reason, because they were so high, the drop of percentages and stuff, can we lock in at any time, redo our contract? So based on our conversation in the spring, when we were locking in, or last fall, when we locked in, um, and Mark and I had discussed it about a month or two ago when the prices had come down. Um, the energy consultant said now is not the time to um, blend and to wait. So if we see in the spring that the price drops again, um, we could love to see if we can do a blending with dying oil and extend the contract. Okay. Yep, we just have to keep So this, this consultant is, are they usually right? <laughs> well, it's a new one. Uh -huh. We're using Titan Energy instead of talking directly to the company. Because we switch companies. Mm -hmm. One's a company anyway. We want to be now. We could talk mm -hmm. directly to them. Anybody else? What's next for you? The operating okay. budget for the transfer station for twenty. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Again, the prices are. Pretty equivalent to last year. There are two increases. One in the professional technical line because of the contracted MSW rates. So that went up six thousand eight hundred nineteen dollars. And that's with Casella. Casella would have contracted. Um, and then the the other is contracted services. We've added pest control for the rat issue up there. Have that under control. Yes, we, can. <laughs> yeah. we need a lot of cats for that. Um, can I have a question? The salaries and wages is this not based on three people up there? We keep it as three, we're having trouble finding someone willing to work two days a week, <laughs> so it's been advertised. Okay, that's fine. The two gentlemen up there do uh, a very good job, in my opinion, when I'm there. They're courteous, they're respectful, they help. They seem to be working well together. I mean, uh, so I'm, I'm asking, I mean, sometimes we had a third person up there because the mix wasn't quite right with people and there seemed to be a little more tension. 
Um, and also the people weren't looking at signs or something. We were having trouble with where they were throwing so the coverage to the guys out. Yeah. So the bottom line is the, the salary and wages, we should have we have a, um, a leftover in there? We do, but with operating budget, it doesn't carry over. Okay. So we'd like to fill that only more so for Saturdays. It gets extremely busy and just making sure everyone's placing items where they're supposed to be and we maximize our recycling and, mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. A third person would be very helpful. Okay, fine. Next. No one has questions. We can move on to um, capital. I'll start with road resurfacing. How your books are laid out. Well, that is. Six one eight seven zero zero one. The first page. First page. Of right after the. Just go. Yeah. Thanks, Albert. You got it. Everybody got it. No, that's how it went. Why is it? Why do I not know? Next page. Next one. Second page. Okay. Thank you. Are we doing anything with Hampton Road? Not as far as paving. We have money. That's a, a different, a different item. This is just for road resurfacing. Okay. Um, I have in here to pave Gallen Road when it was originally done. Andy had informed me that just the binder coat was installed. It never was top coated. So um, I have that in as our top priority to to put a finalized wearing course on that road. I've also included the standard, standard items, guardrail repair, the painting of the yellow lines, crack ceiling, and some drainage issues. The new item I've, I've asked for is a rubberized chip seal. And I don't know if anyone's familiar with it, but it, it basically is an asphalt rubber that they apply first off to the road. It basically seals and rejuvenates the brittle asphalt, then they overlay with a, a treated stone. It's similar to a chip seal, but when it's all finished, it looks like a solid black surface. Um, the state's been using it. I don't know if anyone's driven 149 from Westchester to Route 2. They did it about two, two or three years ago. It's held up phenomenal, very minimal cracking coming through. Um, a lot of towns are turning to that as a way to catch up on their road program. Um, Columbia has about 42 miles of road. In the past, when I look historically, we um, resurfaced about one mile a, a year. A typical road will last 20 to 25 years, so we'll be falling behind unless we try to utilize some maintenance to extend the life of a road. So by applying the, the rubberized chip seal, it can add 12 years to life of the road. So what does that add in manpower or person power? I mean, it's a contracted service. It's not something oh. we can do in house. Okay. And the cost is $20,000. No, I'm proposing a, that we add in 100,000 oh. and that will do right now. December, I received quotes. That's when fuel prices were really high. I mean, we probably should get a mile and a half at those rates, but the vendor said it should drop um, this okay. next season. And you see you're applying 22, 23 unused funds carry forward $75,000. Mm -hmm. Okay, questions on that? So, paving the gall road is one thing, and then other roads would be getting the road that I just said. Correct. Correct. Uh, that's and and that's something explain, we'd evaluate after winter to see which ones would be the best candidate. And you, and you, when you told me about this, 
two months ago, you basically explained that those that rubberized chip seal works very well on uh, lightly traveled roads or so. It's, it's better for those. If we have to do roads, it probably gives us more life on those roads that are less traveled. Than, the lower uh, the volume, the better. The better. Um, obviously, on 149, they've used it. That's <coughs> extremely heavily yeah, traveled, and it's it's held up phenomenal. Okay. So, I think we're only. I think that's the way the state will be moving, as opposed to the mill. How does how does it compare price wise to? Oh, significantly less. So if you see Gollum Road to just top coat that with an inch and a half to two inches of asphalt, it's three hundred and forty thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and that's just under a mile. So you're looking at less than a third, quarter of the cost. Well, I guess I have to ask you if they're using it on one forty nine, which is a very heavy, tra heavily traveled road, more so than Gollum at a higher rate of speed and everything. Why wouldn't we just do it there? Because Gollum never, basically with asphalt, you put a binder course down, which is a course of stone, and then you top it with a wearing course, yeah. which is a smaller stone, and then you never put that wearing course down. Okay, so going forward, when you That's the only road in town that doesn't have a wearing course, so then we could. That's, that's my next question. Okay, I understand the Gollum situation. But going forward, could we top coat? I mean, could we use this stuff on a majority of our 42 mile of roads? You can use it on, I can't say the majority because once a road is too far gone, yep. you can't use it because it can't bring back structural okay. integrity to a road. So that's why like all our subdivision roads that were put in, you know, late nineties, and they're not heavily traveled, they're at a point where if we do something like this, it will extend, extend the life. life out. It's not, you're not looking at like a pine street that has severe rutting. That's not something that this can, can fix. All right. Yeah. Thank you. You asked about Henniquin Road. I don't know if that's your next page. Okay. I don't know what order yours is. It's the first one. It's the first one. It's mine. <laughs> so there's there's money left in that line item, 47,857. We're not proposing to add any more. We just um, with a small crew, we're strapped and we get pulled on different projects here and there. So we need to hopefully move on this, this spring and summer. That's our goal to finish this. What is this though? I know it was the drainage. You took you took up all the drainage, you connected them underneath the roads. Well, we removed the, the cross pipes yeah. um, and replaced them. We have to now reestablish the swales that have filled in over time. Okay. Um, and then the lower section from Lake Road up, I think we'll be installing about eight catch basins and piping to finalize the design that was back from 2012. Okay, so we'll talk about the manpower as we go along, and there's a few more things you're going to talk about, but that's where that mini excavator is going to come in, right? That's right, it'll be very helpful. <laughs> The box culvert repair capital item. The Hunt Road project <clears throat> is still in limbo. We are still waiting review um, from the Army Corps of Engineers, so we can't move forward without that permit. So that right now is just in a holding pattern until they review that. Um, we've included in here though an additional 200,000 to move forward on designing two culverts that are, are failing. So if we start with the design, our hopes is that we'll get permitting in place and there'll be grants that come available. And once you have engineering and, and a permit approval design, they will be more likely to get a grant to the town that's ready to move. Um, you know, such as the case, this was 
we have two hundred thousand dollars transferring over from the Hop River Bridge because that was a project ready to go, so it received funding through the infrastructure bill for the town save money in that, so we could transfer. So it's not really an increase. It's so just explain a, what you're going to use that two hundred thousand for. We have two culverts we're going to begin the engineering on. One is on Mock Road, Lower Mock Road. The other is on Old Romantic. One's a box culvert and one's just a culvert. It, so I'm looking at this. It says proposed expenditures $200,000, which we already have, I guess, from the Hop River Road project. Right. So that maybe explain a little better. It's just transferred yeah, I, over. I got that. Okay. Got the transfers from one, which we don't need the money for, over to another one. But what we don't have is, so are you telling me out of this year's budget, we're not going to appropriate one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars for anything for no. the, for this? So this is basically a a zero, like we're at one hole, except for the, the two hundred to one. So, so what you'll see on the budget is an increase in this line of two hundred, but on another line will be a decrease of two hundred, so it's a wash. Right. And the, I guess my question is. When we technically usually appropriate one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars, why don't we appropriate next year with the amount of culverts we're going to have to go after in the future? Oh, you mean make it a bigger budget? Or you're not really making it a. We're we're not asking for more money. We're asking for the routine money that we put into this. Because the transferred money is already money we've appropriated to a different project and now moving here. So the 125 was really allocated only for the Hop River. So now the Hop River uh, or the box no, culvert. No, it says so, Hunt Road. Yeah, it was for the Hunt Road box culvert only. Okay. So that's the 125. That was what the allocation was. And plus we have a seed grant as yep. listed there. So there's no further money supposedly hopefully needed for the hot road culvert. I understand that we can take the word hunt road out. out. My if we if we take out hunt road and we you put you want to start culvert, funding for the mock over the man any mock. any culvert that comes up next that drops into the in, that we can't get through the road because it drops out or something. I guess that's a discussion if we want to start funding it ahead of you, but, the design. Right. You've told me that there's five real bad ones and there there's five or six or seven that are not so bad, but in the future, they're going to have to be taken care of. Correct. correct? The town will have to start budgeting. So my thing it. is continue to put into the culvert fund. We've been doing 125. This is a, this, this fell in our lap. It's 200,000 because this federal government is going to pay that. We saved it, but it's good. So we're moving it over. Why are we not continuing to put into the culvert fund at 125? I think part of the reason is because there's grant funding out there. We have to see if it's a reimbursement or it's, <coughs> or are they just going to give us the funding for it? So for, for the culverts. The culverts. They're, they're really? Funding. They're having trouble spending all this federal money that's coming down. That's why we want to get ahead of it. <laughs> well, I did apply for a grant. Or the old romantic. Hold on, I, I'm going to call Richard Blumenthal. <laughs> I mean, if they have that, we can't get permits, and we can't get out here with Carter out here. We can't actually build any permits. So, how long do we as the Hunt Road project there? Well, that's what was going on before I started. Yeah, but the, the, the money, the money appropriated has been going on for a while. But I guess because we weren't going to do anything until we had all the money, correct? No, it's been in the it's been in the hands of the Army Corps of Engineers for right. two years. But if they said two years ago, you have our approval, this is what we designed and everything, we still didn't have all the money to do it, right? We didn't have all the money, plus we had to make sure we had a certain amount budgeted because of the steep grant. Was Correct. Was then we were told certain things were included. Now it's changed to it's fully funded. So there's been different <clears throat> Changes throughout the whole project on funding. So it's basically been fluctuating in what we were supposed to do, what we're waiting for. Um, I, I, I just worry in two years, you, we're sitting here and you tell me you need 400,000 400, for a culvert and 
and there's no grants to be had, and we're back to, ooh, we should have put money away for those things. How much does it cost for a culvert? It can range if it's no. if it's a straightforward height, it could be two hundred fifty thousand. If it's a box culvert, you're looking at seven hundred fifty thousand to one point five million, depending on size, stream. All those in favor of tubes. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know thoughts. I like your idea. Yeah, it makes sense not have ebbs and flows when you try. So, so it hasn't been approved, is what you're saying. It has the state has to approve the design of the culvert. At this point, I just wanted to have money so we could just seeing what we've encountered with Hunt Road, get ahead of the game and start the the engineering is not going to change no. over the next right five to ten years. So, if the engineering and permitting is taking three four years, we need time. to get. So the other jump on these. Right. But the other thing that concerns me is the bottom line on this. Say is requiring a three hundred and fifty thousand dollar match to a steep award. It doesn't say to what steep award or future steep awards, or they kind of play this game that says if you have the money, we'll give you the money. That was for the that's for the that's for the hunt. That's for the hunt. But if you're doing it for that, who knows what the rules are going to be later? I'd be soon. Yeah. So I would say if we have to fund it. We should have money in there to be able to fund it. It was just the next one, which is worse, Mock Road or Man? Old Road Man? Well, Mock Road is a box culvert. Old Road Manic is a true culvert pipe. Okay. <laughs> All right. It's a simpler repair. All right. So make a note, Mark. Yeah. Pencil in 125 there. Yeah. Okay. I think, we're... I think we need to get some final finalization of what the town really needs to fund for the Hop River, and then you know where to go for it. Because Hop we might already have enough in there. The Hop River? Hop River. 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 I mean the Hop Road. We just have to make sure that we... it's what we need. Yeah, okay. Because you might have excess in there. And, and which would go to another culvert yes. job down the line. Yes. Okay. So it's culvert up the culvert. <laughs> Okay, uh, I'll get more information, now, please. Next. Um, preliminary cost and design estimates. Yep. We're putting in asking for a zero because we do have existing funds in that. That's a line item in case we come across an emergency situation where we need engineering. So, we have a balance. We won't. Okay, we have a balance of fourteen seven. Okay. No, um, DPW capital equipment I put in for the replacement of the two thousand backhoe. Basically, what we have is we have a newer backhoe that the town uses, um, and an older backhoe that the transfer station uses. So. Typically, what's done in the past is we purchase a new one, ours will get transferred down to the transfer station, and then the, the equipment at the transfer station, if it can be um, traded in, we'll do that. But it's a replacement pass down. And tell the amount of repairs you're doing on the transfer station backhoe. Well, right now, the, the transfer station backhoe is you know, not in great shape because it has been tapped. It's a hand me down, if, if you will. So. You know, we're doing the bare minimum to limp it along. Basically, it's needed to turn um, the leaf composting to handle the brush that's used to compact the bulky waste and the cardboard. Yeah, I have a, I have a question. Okay. All right. <clears throat> How old is the newer of the two? The one right now at the transfer station is a 2000. The newer one that we're using is a 2012. What kind of shape is that one in? That one's in good shape. Okay, that's in good shape. So here's my question. Would you get a used one for the transfer station? Why would you take a 2012 that's in good shape and move it to the transfer station and buy a new one for down for the DPW regular uh, you know, construction work out in the field? Can we get a used one for the transfer station? Is there another way we can? Used equipment right now is 
is hard to find and you try to try to find a backhoe that's used but in good condition it, it's one of those unknowns could we find one possibly but could it be somewhere where you have to ship it in and pay for shipping right now um off the source well bed that's how we've purchased a few pieces of equipment lately we get 30 percent off what a private company gets because you're a municipality yeah. so it's quite a savings compared to what the the private sector would, would purchase it for but we're, we're buying a new piece of equipment to take a good piece of equipment and move it up as the primary crusher at the transfer station, you know, a mover and crusher at the transfer station. Well, I mean, it is an 11 year old machine. It's in good working order because we take care. take care of it, but it's still an aging piece of equipment. Uh -huh. So it depends on how, you know, if the town wants to spend 30, 40,000 on a a used piece of equipment and then in what in five years you have two pieces of equipment that are exactly i don't know if they're the exact well uh, i mean i understand what you're saying or you buy a new one and you have two pieces of equipment that could do the same new job for five years right I mean, if we left the backhoe that you, the better backhoe, the 2012, if you left that in the role that it's playing right now, get five good years out of it? Probably, yes. Yeah. So now we have two good five-year pieces of equipment instead of two. It's just any time a piece of equipment okay. gets used, you know, and you're on the back half of their cycle, the maintenance expenses are just going to go up one. How much for, you know, a tie rod for a machine like that's $1,200 and they're really just you? starts. How much would it cost for a year for repairs of the, like for the 2000? And that's the thing. We're not, you know, keeping that machine at, you wouldn't want to take it on the road. So we are replacing things as they break because we do have a spare that we can run it up and crush. So I would say moving forward, if we're going to keep that in service, we'll have to put $8,000 into it. And is it worth it? To work at the transfer station. Yeah, but you don't know at that point that a head gasket could go. It's just, you're just fixing things kind of like the loader. At one point, you really want to put that kind of money into it when it. I, I look at it like a used car. I, I'd rather, me, I'd rather spend $200 a month on repair on a, new, on a used car than $500 on a new car. Because in the end, if they're both running, I'm having to spend, I know I'm spending money. So the other question I have, ooh, that new machine you have, is that taking some of the workload off the 2012? What does patulous mean? Yes, obviously it, it will do some of the work that the backhoe okay, so used okay. to do. All right. But it can't, it can't replace what the backhoe can do. <laughs> Okay. I, 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 it's a guessing thing how long it lasts. Uh, you know, do we do it now? Correct. And I would rather plan for it as opposed to the loader that was a surprise and then we had to. Okay. Those are my questions. Thank you. Anybody on this? Okay. Um, the dam mitigation is staying where it is right now. We're waiting on permitting to replace the gate. So that money will be carried over until we have the go ahead. I, I anticipate we'll be making those repairs in the spring. Okay. Um, 
transfer station equipment repairs. We're actually reducing the amount of money that we have. Every year we put in money just in case repairs come up and we've been lucky that there hasn't been too many necessary repairs. We've been able to do them in-house, which has saved us money. So that item will be reduced by 15,000. Um, wait. So you have thirty-five thousand in there. So you're going to take fifteen thousand out of it. Correct. What are we doing with the fifteen thousand? Space that's helping to pay for any other increases in cash flow. Okay. That's tree removal. We're asking for another hundred thousand dollars. To continue that work, remembering um, that as it is trees along the road. So I I see there you're dropping it to fifty thousand next year. Is that well? We've been we've been tackling quite a bit, and by reaching out to EverSource, um, they probably saved us a hundred thousand dollars in the work that they did. So the more I reach out to the tree warden and our liaison. Um, with different problem areas in town where I notice we're having multiple outages. I bring it to their attention. They've been so far. All along helpful. 87, down here at 534, <laughs> it's a very bad spot. So if you could get them to work out there. Unfortunately, that's the state tree warden. I can't help you with that. Uh, I can reach out to, they actually took quite a few on 87. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Thank Nobody you. Nobody likes to lose <laughs> And that's pretty much it, unless people have questions. Uh, you had a DPW, uh, so I saw something here about the, how's the, how's the work going down there for the, um, I don't know, the DPW office and? Jason's heading that, but the building's in, the walls are framed. Um, I think we're waiting on awarding the electrical. I believe in plumbing, so it's moving along. Okay, good. Anybody have any questions for anything? Thank you very much. Listen, uh, you, your department does a great job. Okay. I, I never, never get a call about Department of Public Works. Okay. Um, and when I don't get calls, that means they're doing a great job. I appreciate it. All right, we, please have let good, know. we have a good crew. They work yeah. really well together. Yeah, so. good. Thank We're you. We're lucky. Thank, thank you for some strong leadership, too. So thank you also. Thank you. All right. Next is the come back to Bob. Want me to volunteer fire? <laughs> I think she saved us money. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> Richard. All right, Tom Doyle, uh, president of the fire department. Uh, Chief Pistensky uh, just got called out on a call. He's down in Hamden right now. Hopefully, he'll get back as soon as he can. Uh, I have Assistant Chief Lewis here in case we have any questions. Uh, I want to echo what you just said. Uh, we have had nothing but great help from the Department of Public Works. They have done a fab fabulous job. Uh, Dan is like Nobody in there. He, he some breaks, he either fixes it or does the best to get somebody in there. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been having HVAC problems for the day we got there, and they're starting to get fixed. And it's largely due to his dedication. So I really want to you know, call him out and also, you know, best to support of that. Thank you. You know, we got the split units in, and uh, it's it's not freezing or hot. We don't have the floor heat going and the air conditioning going simultaneously, things like that. So I want to thank you for making that stuff happen. How's the moisture in there? <laughs> well, luckily it's winter. The problem uh, is if you're into building construction, there's no insulation between the roof and the tiles. So what happens is that air can get trapped there, the moist air. And that's one of the issues that was causing this. Because we had a guy that was doing some work, look at it, and goes, you know, if you put sheet rock up there. I said, you know what it would take to drop the ceiling and put sheet rock up there and plus a lot of fuel, but but these things will help. They have the ability to dehumidify heat and AC. Yeah. So from a multi funding standpoint, it was a great investment. Okay, we'll start with the 10-year capital. 
This document is the same, and there's a lot of uh, CLAs. It should say uh, CDFE. I, I went from the documents that was in Jennifer's attachment. So if you're going to talk to what was attached, okay, so you should see one that looks like this. It's, a, it's the same format as the prior years. It's got, I think that's in the the one that actually yep. right the blue tab. Uh, the one that's folded out down in those past year. Yeah, keep going go further. No. Go back two pages. No. She doesn't have it. It's gonna fold it's in which it is. It's in the old business tab. It's in the old business tab. Unless I'm not it's okay, you have it now. <laughs> <laughs> So very similar to the discussion about capital equipment for the loaders and, and the culverts as well. Uh, what you're seeing there is in prior documents, you may have seen a reference to Rescue 105. Rescue 105 is the piece of apparatus that has been ordered and it's in its final stages of being outfitted and it should be uh, delivered to us within the next hopefully four to six weeks. It's new. The new name for the rescue is called SWAT. The difference between a rescue and SWAT is this one will have more. So, this will allow us to go to a motor vehicle accident and have engines and water and tools necessary to work on an emergency like that. What you're seeing on that first line item is we're looking at a 25 year replacement cycle. Okay, so when it says purchased in 2022, 2047 replacement at a million dollars. We have to crystal ball it. Say, what do we think it's going to cost then? And and per Steve's request, we said, all right, take that number, divide it by the 25 years, and how much do we have to set aside per year? And so when you aggregate it down, it says there's another line down below. It says total proposed capital for town consideration. That's where those uh, additions add up. Okay. Uh, our engine, the next engine that will be replaced. It is going to be what says engine 205. So engine 205 was originally acquired in 1991, but it was retrofitted a few years back to the tune of a couple hundred thousand dollars. So we brought it up to code, if you will, at that time. But it is it's a it's a venerable uh, piece of apparatus. Uh, for example, we had to change a valve on it, and just like that said, we had to change the valve. And instead of spending 1100 on a new valve, we got it repaired for 890 So that's the kind of stuff we have to do when things get old and gas. You can't find the parts. <laughs> well, they pretty much had to make it, didn't they? Yeah. They had a machine this stuff. Because these are manual valves, and you've got to swing with your hand. All, all the new ones, some of your old timers will say, oh, give me a valve, give me, give me something I can turn, now it's buttons. So when you have a piece of apparatus that old, you have to keep it going. So are we still good on the 2029 replacement? You good with that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's okay. Mm -hmm. So from a near term, um, all the rest are just projections. I, I don't know that we, you know, we, none of us can really crystal ball. But as far as the nearest acquisition, that is going to be something we have to look at. That would be the next one. Uh, Service 105. Service 105 and forestry refit. What we're looking there, there is the service truck is basically a very large pickup that we acquired uh, around the time when 9 11 happened. It was for pulling the big trailer. What we're looking to do is to be able to, instead of spending a couple hundred thousand dollars on a forestry truck, something you might see out in California running through the woods, we can use that chassis and apply a retrofit to it. So in other words, take what's currently on it and move stuff over. So that would be where that hundred thousand dollar comes into play in 2024. The service truck was in for about five years. That command vehicle it goes back to Chief Sarkel. Uh, that's the. I think we just finished that. If I'm not mistaken, the pickup truck we just offered the F-150. That's going to be outfitted to be the command vehicle. Right. I'm just trying to make sure that words don't get confused. So way back. Probably four or five years ago, when Chief Stark Alley he wanted a command vehicle. That's what's going to be basically the replacement for the service 105. That's what right. 100,000 is. So that's why that's zero now, because we Correct. Can... Correct. Um, then when we get down below that, capital equipment with respect to the fire side of the house, and because we handle the EMS, your parts tools, your jaws of life types of things, that's what that is. 
uh, hoses, ladders, things of that nature, all that's spelled out there. And if anybody's looking for what a TIC is, that's your uh, trivia question. Does anybody know what a tick is? That's why I'm doing this, okay? Thermal? Thermal imaging cameras. Very good. <laughs> I wanted to make sure you guys weren't just buying ticks thinking that way. You get them free out in the woods. You still walk around and you get all the ticks you want. And the gas meters for uh, toxic gases, things of that nature. So what we're looking at is a rough number of uh, fluctuating years, but about 300000 in capital to be set aside by the town. So if you're looking at setting aside for culverts, setting aside for fire department, capital equipment, things of that nature, that's what that line is with the double bar at the bottom. And this carries out for 10 years. So it should look something like this, and it runs out to 32, 33. Mm -hmm. The next lines down, if it's still on your sheet there, is what we carry. So when we go on a call, we don't bill for fire calls. We do bill for ambulance. So when we get that ambulance billing, that revenue that we take in has to cover a portion of our operating budget, as well as pay for our ambulances and for these things that it takes to make it happen. Stretchers, uh, a Lucas device, which is the automated compression things for CPR. And like when we went through the trouble with the uh, EpiPens, and they were running 800 bucks a pop, and you have to have four of them, and you have to have them on both ambulances, and you have to throw them out and do that. We pick up all those costs. So both, all those expenses are covered by us, plus the acquisition of the vehicles. So when you see Ambulance 605 was acquired in 2009, we've ordered that. We had about a 14-month wait for a chassis. The people that make the actual ambulance won't even take the order until they get a chassis number and a bid number. That's how backed up things are. So we're looking at that not coming in for a couple of years and we've ordered it now. But that's in the, roughly the $300,000 range. Our other ambulance is called Ambulance 505. So we're projecting pushing that up to 2026 and possibly another $50,000 on that. But that's our money. That's not for the town's consideration. We just want you to think about what we've got and you know what we have to pay for and what we look to the town to share uh, expenses on. Things that um, Beth has been helping out with, with her department, uh, fuel tank in the back, that's 20 years old. The boiler in the building, uh, the building just hit its 20 year mark. The HVAC units, we got the, we can update the pending to the HVAC, the split units have been sealed. However, the majority of the building has floor heat. The, the things like the good old days, radiators, there's a series of valves and we're having nothing but trouble with them. And same thing, trying to find parts for those things has been very difficult. So that's what that's alluding to is when it says ongoing valve problems, that's for the floor heat. So the floor heat heats the apparatus area and other large portions of the building. So we're trying to see what we can do with that in general. And one thing to keep an eye on, uh, the septic system is 25 years old. The water separator is in the apparatus area. There are some special drains. They have to have a tank, kind of like a septic tank, but it's just for making sure oil doesn't get into the ground. We just want to make sure that that doesn't get uh, a problem. We did have the concrete in the back replaced. That had to be blown up. I guess the tank started to float. And so they were, that's group uh, put a contractor in to put some new concrete around that. That was very helpful. Uh, and the generator to keep stuff going, that also is 20 years old. So from a Planning standpoint, uh, we have a generator maintenance company. If there's some way, we've had some discussions with Dan and Jerry James has been very involved with a lot of these discussions. If there's a way to come up with a generator contract in town, the school's got one, town hall's got one, we've got one. I don't know if there's gonna be one down by the public works. Just in general, you know, to economies of scale, there's a way to do that. Because that's in the same thing, it's in a 20 year mark. We did get an update from the maintenance guy saying some of the controls are getting ready to get replaced. So things that we wanted to have. We, you don't have the idea of cost of something like that, huh? How many, how many uh, KWs are kicking up? 30? No, I think it's more than that. It runs the whole entire building, runs our doors, the heat, everything. So I can get that answer. Or Dan can get that answer. Yeah, I worked. Um, we ran, you know, 300 people campsites and for military and stuff um, with 
like 35 kW. But you put a load on it. So you're probably okay, you're out there. All right. Next thing is a topic I don't like bringing up. Well, don't bring it up. I'm saying thank you. I'm out of office in 24, 25. Bring it up when I'm gone. We've covered this and I under, I understand. So um, I wanted to ask you here, how is recruiting and uh, know, let's and talk I about get to that. Okay. Yeah, I don't I honestly I know that we all know it's we uh, just want to make sure that it's we're talking about the EMS projection. What happens now is there are two departments east of the river that volunteer for fire and ambulance, and that's mm -hmm. us and Andover. Okay, they do about half our call line. Um He's a young guy in the department, even though he's been around for 30 years. A lot of us are older, and uh, it, we're not going to be able to do what we're doing. And that's a, a problem that's facing the nation. This is not a Columbia problem. This is not a Connecticut problem. And so we've been doing a lot of recruiting. We had two call older people who, unfortunately, couldn't make the time. Okay, so we had two I'll call them 45 plus come in, and they just couldn't do it. One was a lot, a lot of family stuff, and the other was just work stuff. We've had a lot of success. Five or six good cadet become member age types. The challenge is they're starting a career. So they want to be a doctor. They want to be an APRN. So we can get maybe five years out of folks. So when it comes to recruiting, we're, we're trying to rethink who's our target. You know, do we have 30-year types that started when they were younger? Probably not a lot. You know, the, the Jeff Lewis's and a lot of the folks, even Steve, Steve's around 23 years, I think. Mm -hmm. He's a baby, but he's not even 40 yet. He's got 23 years. And I started when I was 55. And I think, you know, we're, we're, we're starting to say things like, wait a minute, can, can we target 50 year olds to maybe give us five or six years? That's a whole different way of thinking. You're not going to get a bunch of teens to come in. Number one, the training is very rigorous. Uh, the expectations for equipment and all this other stuff make it very difficult for people. The simple answer is for younger kids, they've been coming in, but it takes a lot to get them up to speed. But we still have the problem of people work. So when the you know, tones dropped, we went to a fire on Whitney Road and there was two people in one engine and myself in the second one. And so that's why we point out the staffing projection. But the thing to remember is that's for EMS people to sit in the station. That's not for your full fire crew. Now they should, they could be fire certified, you can work all that stuff out. But any type of recruiting or any type of civic involvement type of thing, we're, we're wrestling with those ideas right now, trying to figure out what's your target market? Who's your audience? You know, once the kids get out of school and they're maybe in college or late, School, maybe there's something there. We're asking all these questions. We've got a lot of younger folks, but it takes time to get somebody up to speed. It's a solid five years to feel comfortable, in my opinion. So, this projection of EMS 600,000 is that four people? Uh, that's a crew of two. Crew of the two. two. But, uh, I mean, is that two people around the time of day? During the day. It's hitting everybody. It is okay. they're hourly. They're fully loaded. You got to remember, for each person on, on a seven by twenty-four shift, when they load the cost up, you need five people to cover three shifts. You get you know, three shifts of eight hours plus time off and things like that. So the overhead cost for the company, like a Vintech, they've got to cover that. The average tenure for EMTs for them is about five to six years. So they have the same challenges that we do. So they're the tenure, like I teach at code one. And so we're constantly pumping people out. And the Etnas and all the other places that you know, take our graduates, they're saying that every five to six years, people are burning out. It's, it's a hard job. Work. Pardon? It's a hard job. It's also an emotional job. Yeah. A physical up. job. Try lifting up a 400 pound patient and not have your shoulder go up. Um, yep. So, so that's the capital. And then this sheet is the operating budget. So, 
This is going to be volunteer fire department in the proposed operating budget. So the prior one is capital budget that the town provides the income for. The split here is the breakout where it says grant request and then CBFD part. So what we what you notice here is a fairly sizable jump on building and utilities. And the reason for that is as follows. Um, we've been using a member's husband who's been basically doing a job for us, kind of helping with plowing. And he's retiring. So we start to go out for bids. And so we need plowing and we need lawn maintenance. Um, the chief had some ideas and I, I can share those. Uh, unless he hops in, I don't know if he got back from the call. He is back. Okay. Chief, if you want to share that. Yes, uh, thank you. Sorry about that. Uh, back now, hopefully don't get called out again. Um, yeah, in regards to the the snow plowing and the lawn maintenance, like Tom stated, we have uh, a member's husband that was helping us out. Uh, we also had in the past more members with less call volume that we kind of could could pick up the slack a little bit. And uh, not to mention, in the past, we had a member in Bud Myers who would help us with plowing during incidents, um, knowing that he he would get the call too. He could come and make sure the uh, apparatus uh, apron is cleared off in the parking lot. Um, so that, again, was a tremendous help. The way I look at this now is in this world, legal-wise in our risk and liability, we have a, a service to provide and we can't we have to be a priority. Uh, when the call drops, we need to make sure that we can get out. And we, we know that comes at a cost. So when we talk to these vendors, we want to make sure that we are their number one customer. Um, and again, yes, that, that comes at a cost. And I know going through the town, there's been talk before about public works possibly helping out. Again, I also know that they are strapped for manpower and then added equipment costs um, we think that this option having it subbed out is definitely a lot more cost effective and again limits the the risk liability because if something happens where a member gets injured in the parking lot or something that not only affects workers comp numbers but it also then takes that member off the line and reduces our membership that can respond to emergencies and, and help out the town let alone also um, possibly a public person coming on property that could slip or fall or have an, an injury that now we're looking at liability in, in that aspect, where if we contract it out, again, it defers some of the liability if we can show that we have been proactive and done the best we can. So that's where we're looking at with, with these numbers. So Chief, I got a question. Break this 21,000 down and uh, what's, what are you projecting for plowing? What are you projecting for uh, maintenance of the grounds? I am gonna defer that to Tom because I think he has the numbers right in front of him. If okay. he could answer that. Yeah, we, had, we got a quote for 17,000 just for plowing. Larry was doing uh, 250 a cut and the price cuts are about 500. So to cut the front, the back, and do some trimming and take care of that kind of stuff and mulch, that's where that's coming out of. So okay. could it be less if you go time and materials? Sure, because look at this winter. You know, this this would have been a great winter to do. But if you did fixed price, you'd have been writing checks for a storm that didn't happen. So we were looking at, we, we asked them, what would the target be? It was 17,000 for plowing. And then 500 times, probably in, in the spring, we're doing about two or three cuts every every four weeks or so, depending on the length of the grass, and it kind of tails off. So that's another five to six thousand dollars. So that's what we. How long does it take him to cut the the grass? The biggest problem is the field in the back. How long does it take him to cut the grass? I don't know. I think he said two hours for the short stuff, but then when he does the back, he adds another two hours. How many acres is the field? One, two, then he cuts. I would say the front and the back is about an acre and a half of cut grass. Okay. So four hours is probably it takes its time. I mean, I cut my two acres in 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. With a zero turn. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Long cut. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, so 
All right, so you have needs there. We are, we're looking at bringing on um, help at Rec Park to cut. So we have the manpower through a summertime. So we have the manpower to do all these other things that DPW does. You know, when, when she sits there, the director sits there and she says, oh, we get pulled away on different jobs and stuff like that. A lot of it is to get fields ready and help out up there and stuff. So we're looking into that. All right. Let me, let me talk with, uh, let me look into this. All right. I understand the need. Absolutely. Now, the other thing is when, when that member was up there plowing for you, you guys can get out of there in two inches, three inches of snow, no problem, correct? But you'd like to be the first one to plow when the snow, when the snow starts. That was one of the conditions in the RFP we sent out. Because if you drive over it and it's oh, yeah, and you it just packs down, you've got concrete. I mean, you've nice. got ice on top of concrete because yep. you can't salt. So <clears throat> it's just a nightmare. And we had a snowblower. For the last few years, even when he was there, we still had a snowball and we were shoveling sidewalks, even with him doing it. Yeah, as the snow comes down, I don't know how what you're asking for is to have basically a plow at the ready. If it's coming down an inch an hour, two inches an hour, or something, which some storms will do, you got to have a, a plow plow that almost continuously. Yeah. Yeah. Not that, I mean, that what if we get you know if it's a bad storm and, and someone's in island woods we gotta get all the way out there yeah, yeah. It's, it's a it's a very challenging balance <clears throat> all right you want to talk about the other stuff uh administrative we were able to cut back um the lawsuit hopefully will not hit us for any more legal fees that we were covering on that. And the operating budget is about an 8% increase, 8.6. And that just reflects the cost of stuff going up. Everything has just gone up as far as, functionally we're not adding much more, it's just the prices of the stuff that we buy. Stuff was running 10, 12%, 15%, if not more. And it was just, it's up a lot of inflation stuff, if you will. The overall numbers were, with, with that increase, the overall was 7.48 on the, uh, the total number. So there's 27.6 is 7.48? Uh, with the 21,750, which includes the snowplow. So if you look at um, the 27.6 in the lower right hand corner, correct, with that increase, that 396 year over year is a 7.48% increase. Okay. And you said the problem was 17 and the, uh, the lawn was 20, it was uh, 4750, about five grand. About 5,000. Okay. Anything else? Uh, thank you no, for all the financial support. Um, DPWs with the operational support. I know we, you know, we volunteer. It's our town. It's our, it's our folks. Everybody in town. We do what we do. Um, we try to keep it down. We try to keep it as tight as we can. Uh, we've always been frugal with a number of years. It was six, six out of nine years. We had a zero percent increase um, over the last decade. Um, but that's you know, I'm starting to get some older trucks. And the same, same discussion. Yeah. You heard that say, you blow a head gasket, you don't have a, a loader. Okay. So we lost a valve, $890. Instead of just ordering a new one, you know, we told the guy just fix it. And it's like, well, you have that conversation. So, well, should we put the new valve in or should we just redo the old? It's a constant back and forth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you like used cars. You want to keep them maintained, right? Especially when I got to pay for them. Yeah. I mean, if you can keep them maintained, sometimes that. Two fifty becomes a hundred dollars, and you know, so we get it. But listen, I, I think you do a great service for the town. There's no doubt about it. Everybody out there knows that the fire department 
EMS, you guys and gals, and whoever's out there, you know, you, you really show love for the town that a lot of people take for granted, okay? Uh, but this board, we understand it, and when we bring our concerns to five pack, we try to give you the very best, you know that. Oh, um, so we get, we'll work together to get solutions to this. Uh, I really don't have any other questions, anybody? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, great job. Oh, we have a beautiful sign. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I we have a dispatch. We have a dispatch sign. So, <laughs> I had to get, get squat up there instead of rescue. We don't want to confuse everybody. I had already done it, so it's not a great job. <laughs> All right. No other questions. Thank you very much. Right, thank you. We'll, uh, we'll get back to you if there's any changes. Okay. But, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Ready? That's too bad because we usually go good, good. No. I'm going to do that. Jesus, how are you? I'll hold it against you. We're good. <laughs> Sue, Hi, Sue. Sue, is it you? Which Sue is speaking to? Is I'm speaking. I'm talking to you, the librarian in a box up there. That's what. That's what we got. <laughs> one parents in a box. Do you want to? Do you want to do it, or do you want me to start, or whatever? Uh, what? Why don't I start, and, and you can jump in if you want. Good with that. Okay. Well, as y'all know, um, we're looking this round at this year at a 6.2% increase, which equates to roughly $27,000. Um, I think you're gonna hear the same things that you've heard all night, unfortunately. Um, this increase represents basically three areas. Um, the first being administration and vendor increases. This is about $5,000 of that total. Um, it's known increases for the bookkeeper, the cleaners, bank fees, insurance, um, the sort of the, the running of the library. Um, the second area is adult materials. We increased by $2,000. That's in electronic materials mostly. And it is like everything else, simply the cost of the product. Um, last, the last line and the biggest is salary and benefits. This includes a 10% health insurance increase. Um, it includes increases in minimum wage, which we clearly don't have any choice about. Um, and it includes a salary adjustment that took place across all 12 staff members at the library. Um, and then the increase in what I think of as the ripple effects, things like the taxes go up because the whole system numbers shift. Um, last year, the board library board asked us to do or asked me to do a salary study. We looked at all staff. It was prompted because we had staff members who left, um, among other reasons, citing salary and we knew that we had staff that were considering other options um, in part because of salary at least. And we have the knowledge that a professional and trained experienced staff can save us money in the long run. So we looked at comparisons on a bunch of levels. We compared um, regional numbers, basically our neighbors. We compared demographics um, and we compared based on uh, what I, at least in my mind, I think of as Anglic rank. It's the um, state's ranking that you folks talked about last meeting in regards to the school grant. It's the AEN GLC ranking. Um, if you're not familiar with it, um, it's adjusted equalized net grand list per capita. So it's a wealth ranking of all Connecticut towns that's used by the state um, and used for state funding and used for grant funding. Um, Columbia actually ranks 89. It's a ranking of one to 169, the towns in Connecticut. When 
the board looked at all of the comparisons. We found that the salaries were not comparable. And so the board raised salaries to midpoint and that is reflected in these numbers. Um, we tried our best to, to keep it as low as possible. So we did decrease areas as, as much and as possible that we could. Questions? Uh, why don't you give us a second to kind of look over this? Proposed budget amount. We don't have, we don't. Uh, so you gave us the proposed budget amount. You don't have what we currently, this year's? I don't have that. Do we have that? Yes. Um, Tom Grant, the Tom Grant is four thirty-nine six two shows what they're asking for. Six two six. It's not four. They're asking for four sixty-seven six. Yeah. Right. So I mean, what I'm saying is, it says total salary and wages. I don't know how much did that go up. Like in Medicare, um, there's no retirement. You know, town insurance. That they're showing me a ten percent increase. Okay, I see. Well, that's what we're anticipating. I know. I understand. Oh, okay. What what I'm what you're not showing me any comparison to what this year versus what you're asking for next year. I just like to see it. Well, we're we're asking for twenty seven thousand three hundred and ninety nine dollars increase. So. I can tell you that roughly about $20,000 of that is in the salary and benefits line. 2,000 is in adult materials and a roughly 5,000 is administrative and vendor increases. If you divide it, of course, if you divide the 47399 by the 0.062%, comes up for 41919, which is probably what it was last year. So 4,000. And you tell me, I'm sorry. 442. For a percentage? No, that 457,653 and minus 27399. And, and that's the difference in the grant. Oh, Yeah, okay. It's not 20K, it's 30. 268, and this is 295, 60, and then It's about 27,000, not 20. Right. The total increase that we're asking for is $27,399. Of that $27,399, 
about 5,000 of it is increases in administration and vendor costs. About $2,000 of it is electronic materials and adult materials. And about $20,000 of it is salary and benefits. So within salary and benefits, that 20,000 includes the health insurance increase, salary adjustment, increases, in, which includes increases in minimum wage and increases in FICA and social security and all, all that fine fee kind of stuff. How many people did you say work at the library? Just curious. Yep, we have a staff of 12. It's a, all? no, we have an, a 4.5 FTE, full-time equivalent. So we have we have a lot of individual bodies, but some of them work three hours, some of them work six hours. Yeah, um, three full time. Right. Sue, so, adult. Yeah, we have a, three full time. So three full time. Gotcha. Jumping to two ninety five. Yeah. The only reason I'm asking about this, Sue, is because it says in last year's the salary and wages was two sixty eight eight. And this year it's looked going up to two ninety five six. So basically like twenty seven thousand. And then you have you know taxes and everything is under that. So it's not included. I'm just wondering. Right. So we have increased some of our what we're what we are anticipating in our income. And we have increased um or We've decreased some line items in help to lower the budget. Um, and we have decreased some line items with the expectation and hope that we will be able to recoup funding for that line in other ways, such as grant money, so that we are keeping our ask to the town as low as we can. So if I, if I correct total uh, item six, seven, eight, nine, and ten equal eleven. Is that correct on this? Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So that's total for all that. All right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Expenditures in that area, that whole area with cost of increase in the insurance. And yeah, I get it. Okay. It, the, the, you know, the issue with the salaries, we we felt that after doing that survey, if if we have a full-time librarian that leaves, we won't be replacing them at what we're paying our current staff now. Now, uh, yeah. you know, so that was a piece of our concern. Uh, people Absolutely. were looking at I mean, we, and we did stick with looking at, at, we didn't look at Mansfield, which they're, they recently had a, an yeah, add in for an adult rich. services librarian at thirty almost 30,000 more than we pay ours. I, I understand it's not the same demographic. So we really stuck with towns that had the same de demographics that we have. We didn't go to the top, we're, you know, in the middle. Um, you know, so it's the time. same we issue. Do. I know we we're all, everybody's sure. Coming. So, um, so that was that was our, our reasoning last year, and we um, we absorbed that last we absorbed you know that last year, but uh, it's, it's tough everywhere. And then the state minimum wage doesn't help because a lot of our part timers are barely above that, are, are right in that area. So as the state minimum wage keeps going up, we have the compression wage issue. Mm -hmm. For the, for the other 
Um, actually, Nine just people for that and Kearns, I mean, you know, the money that have been designated for special items are listed in column D. Library's contribution, column D, has not been itemized. So basically, the library is responsible for column D and column E. Yeah. Do you, um, other than the town grant, do you, do you apply for other federal, state, any kind of grants? Does that help you out at all? Um, we do. Some of it's listed on here. We do get a state grant, a state grant every year. They tell us it's not going to exist, and then it does. So we budget in figuring that it really will exist. Um, and it can be anything from 200 to 800 dollars. We budget for six, splitting the splitting the difference and hoping for the best. Um, we also apply for various grants from various agencies. We've been really lucky that in my entire time here in Columbia, we've received an SBM grant for the summer reading program, and that keeps our line item for children's programming down significantly. Um, we, we've applied for it again. I have no reason to believe that we won't get it, um, but we, we don't have the check yet. I can also tell you, Steve, that right at the moment for this year, I've got four grants outstanding that were not including the SBM one for summer reading that I have my fingers crossed that will come through. And they are things that we apply to every year. Good. Okay. Thank you. One of the issues with grant money is it can only apply. It comes in as designated for us. Yeah. Um, so I know of no grant that will cover true operating and administrative costs. So it yeah. won't cover things like salary or supplies or utilities. Um, different programs or, I, yeah, I get it. I'm just yeah. wondering, making, you know. Yep. Sue, how much is the SBM grant that you apply for? Let's see. Um, we, we actually apply for $7,000 and we usually get four. Okay. And that is not included in any of, in any of this budget. We just, we figure that if we don't get the SBM grant for summer reading program, we'll figure something out or we'll go to the friends and say, we need, we need more help this year because we're in trouble. The cleaning contract? Uh, I, I checked into where the town could help out, but their schedule is so different from the town because they clean when the library's closed and the library's open quite late that I couldn't use my existing personnel. Well, uh, I guess one of my questions is comparing last year's request, looks like it's going down. It's going down by 500 bucks, unless I'm missing something. But it's a 3% increase. Yeah. Yeah. The cleaning, it went down. Yeah. So the narrative says it's an increase to get. I think she meant overall for the utilities, telephone, and cleaning. If you add all those together, I'm not actually think going down for those three. Yeah, the cleaning yeah, has gone. The cleaning, the cleaning has gone up. That's yeah. been an issue. I don't know why it's not reflected, but I think it is. Did she? Okay. Oh. So. Some of our line items may look a little off because we are comparing it to the current year's budget and the current year we shifted things around. So our, our cleaner said they were going to do a 3% increase. Our bookkeeper said a 3% increase. Um, and the what we understand to be the actual numbers are the numbers that we put into this budget request. It went down. Yeah, it went down. Yeah. 
looks like went that way. Well, if that was if, if we're looking yeah. at the budget for last year, which was 56, we didn't spend 56. Right. There was times so, where so we spent less, so it's actually gone up from what we spent last year. They so spent that's why it's 15 five. one instead of 15. Okay. So okay. Yeah. we spent 15 five. Mm -hmm. Whatever, yeah. Whatever yes. for whatever reason right. so we closed a couple of days or storm. Whatever. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Good money left over. Okay. 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 Okay.
decrease, we ran with it. Okay. Any more questions? Mm -hmm. Thanks very much for your time. Uh, I don't know if you put a lot into this. Uh, we're going to look it over and talk a little bit. If we have more questions, we'll certainly give you a call or uh, come see you at the library. Thank you, Matt. We don't want six more months to go by before you check out the book. I'm going to stop bringing them to you. I'm pretty busy. <laughs> Uh, and my car doesn't take those stinking e e e e e CDs. I don't have a CD player in my car. Isn't that terrible? That's why like download, I download have, audio. I tried audio that. I still have a flip phone, okay? It won't text. <laughs> and it works fine, too. I get calls and I get texts. We well, don't need more than that. Pretty serious. Stop so, so. All right, you just replace the A-track in your car. No. I did not. <laughs> <laughs> so it has cassettes. Come on. So he's upgraded a little. All right, thank you. So anything for us? Any questions for us? Thank you, Sue. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm sorry. I, you know, this is kind of kind of kind of tour me. I live on Hannah Quinn Road. I'm on the board. Yeah, very good. Okay. Now, are you friends of the library? Or? Yeah. We get so we actually have several board members are working with them. We can't We're be, trying to help them. We can't, can't. We can't be on their. You know, you can't I understand. Board, but we are actually have probably almost half of our board has offered to help them out. So who so. deals with the chapel? It's, it's the friends. Oh, it's not the friends. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> you, you really, you really need books for a quarter, please. Help me with the floor structure. You know, uh, if you can get them to do that, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sue. Take the rest of the night off, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very you. much. I just want to know if you're going to talk about the geese under the Columbia Lake thing because then I'm staying. Otherwise, I'm going to. Is it on the agenda? No, no, I just see Columbia Lake. I'm like, okay, if you're talking about geese, I'm staying. Oh, my God. I was picking it up yesterday. Oh, I played golf yesterday. I can't tell you how bad the ball rolled in the fairway. Yeah. It was terrible. Thank you. It's terrible. Uh, Thank you. Um, Thanks so much. Thank you. Let me bring in some uh, pyrotechnic people. I'll take care of these. I'll let you do whatever you want to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, There's such controversy in that. All right. So we have uh, three areas. If, if you go through them again, if you have questions, if you have concerns, if you have ideas, you know, please bring it to us at the next meeting. We'll uh, you know, get agenda. The meeting, so I can have people pay the but on the agenda, let's have a review from the previous this week, okay? Just a little review or questions from the previous week on the agenda. Yeah. We're on um, other business if anybody wants to bring up. So are we going to have a meeting next week, Tuesday? I don't think so. It's on the, um, it's the tentative. tentative. It's tentative on the schedule. Yeah, because we get a vote on the 6th, right? Yes, yeah, so you could probably make that one more meeting. Yeah. yeah, but what departments anybody you want to hear from? I know Conservation has put in a request about $6,000 extra. Uh, to work on some of their properties. That's the meeting that was before this. And how about uh, REC? REC will be coming in next week. Okay. Are they looking for an increase? Oh, oh yes, so. and it depends on how much of an increase, how they structure REC. That'll be what okay. we'll discuss. Um, okay. Is there anybody else we need to see from? I mean, really, until we see the at the at the final the board of ed, we really we'll cover all our bases, right? Um, we could hear about everything next week. I think you'll have a good feel for the. Power. How about um, buildings? Facilities. Facilities. We're going to hear from Dan and Jason. Or what? 
And there's not much um, change with them. I don't think there's anything. They're basically status quo unless Pretty the project's the coming up. I'm sorry? They status quo. They didn't really make big changes as far as I can see on their budget. They're still sticking to their HVAC budget over here, keeping it. Okay. There's no new projects coming up as far as I know. Except um, they did put in a proposal for um, a whole new camera system of 28,000. Where's that? So I need to clean your son. No. I don't think that's in here. Clean your son? What? If the all camera footage is not in here, I'll have Jason come in. Oh, yeah, this is new. This is new. And it's just 12,000. That's going to be no, 28,000. That's the full fire alarm system upgrade and better for, cameras for on, where? on the Murphy House and the um, it's Murphy, I think, Rec. If it's the fire alarm system, it's then a fire alarm system. Be, there was also talk about security cameras, right? Which is separate. So that should have been proposed in capital and capital put together. So this is going to be an addition to capital. Okay, can we take this offline? Because it, yeah. it's not on the agenda number one. And it's just, for next week. We're just throwing stuff out there, and I hate that. Let's just we'll work on it. Just get it together for us for next week. Um, I'm just thinking something. Oh, wait a So we need to talk to Rex. She's going to go over the lake budget, um, guard, rain patrol, game rain patrol, and then like any guards. program she wants to put together. Correct. Okay. All right. All right. Um, yeah, so that's fine. Okay. Anybody else? Anything on the budget? So salaries, that's something we'll talk next in about 10 minutes. Executive session. Okay. Anybody else? All right. New business, nothing. Can be late, nothing. Appointments and resignations, nothing. Town administrative report. All right. So let's say an update I put in really Governor Lamont's budget, and now the budget season starts. The Biggest impact I've been hearing is that they're thinking of requiring rent control statewide and that the towns will have to put together volunteer committees and create an actual rent control commission. Um, the crowds are looking at making it regional, but the lobbyists are heavy against the rent control because they're concerned that it would actually reduce the quality of the building stock because people that own property would have to, in order to handle inflation, would have to cut back on maintenance of the facilities and it would discourage building in Connecticut. And our biggest problem we have is uh, not enough housing. Uh, so to put something in place that would reduce the incentive to increase housing uh, doesn't make a lot of sense to a lot of people. So that's in the legislation. But kind of putting price caps on drugs. That's, and um, also, affordable housing is a concern because focusing on affordable housing, but they, they look at the rural towns that we're not willing to make affordable housing without, without understanding that we don't have public water and public sewer to build. No, well, but affordable housing is a relative term. Correct. And here, the best way we can have mm -hmm. affordable housing is making taxes reasonable in my opinion. Because then it's it a, makes it's it a, it's a catch-22 situation. Yeah, I mean. You, keep, you know, by keeping things stable and keeping your tax base down, then people can actually do the start of home. You can have somebody, a young family. That's why we moved here. We can afford it. <laughs> well, and in theory, all this fiber optics that Frontier's putting in should help <laughs> connectivity and reducing costs on internet access, but we'll see. The vote is out on that, but I've heard positive things from other towns. We just got it. Where, where Frontier is in, ahead of us. Mm. How's it working? We saw, it was so nice to say goodbye to Charter. Okay. Yes, Good. and, and goodbye to Dish. We stream. There's more TV than you can possibly watch. Really? Oh, it's stupid. The amount of stuff that you can watch for like a fraction of the cost is ridiculous. What is a fraction? Mean? So, 
We only have internet, right? We bought a Roku device. So Rich likes to watch racing, so we have to get Paramount Plus. So he pays not much. Seven dollars a month. It's not much. And then you get the Roku device, get you all sorts of other stuff, and that's not much a year. So it's it's like maybe what does well, the internet is, cost you? Yeah, how much is that? Sixty-five. It's probably that's that's what spectrum is. Sixty-five. See, mine bumped. Mine was up to eighty. Because you got well, because you didn't bundle, right? If you don't get the phone, well, I don't have a phone. True. I yeah, have a cell phone. That's on those landlines. Right, I just have big, internet. Okay. Bucks. Yeah. So yeah. Frontier went down, but you know. Okay. Um, and also Lebanon backed out of their solar projects, so we don't talk about that. Okay. Well, it just cost us two million. It did. That's all that's it. We're putting a toll. There's some correspondence there for those who made it to the Valentine's Day at Rec Park. It was very nice. Want me to hold a special town meeting? We did that. It was very good. Um, once again, Valentine's Day got a little more play. And Rec Park Race raises funds for camp. I didn't even know we had a race. I don't I know what that either. is. I didn't My wife said to me, Oh, you had a, a race up at Rec Park. A race. Oh, okay. Winter know. Snap. I huh? said Winter Snap, they call it or something. Uh, yeah. yeah. My wife said, You had a race. It's like, Oh, my goodness. I didn't even know that. We need to be kept the race. Uh, these also, if nobody saw it, I brought in an article um, that our Rec director, Deb Fisk, put on women in sports or girls glory, or I don't know what, what women in sports. Women in sports. The current actually did a piece on it um, in the nice. regional section of the paper. It's very oh, nice. Okay. And I've asked her to bring, she's asked me about uh, summer concert series at Red Park. So I've asked her to bring that to the meeting next week. Um, to have it there rather than here. Yep. She, the, the, she's bringing in one band is, I saw them at a premium vineyard and mm -hmm. uh, the place was packed and people mm -hmm. loved them. And you could buy wine and beer. And I'd like to do that right part. What? <laughs> During the concert series. No, we're bye. talking about BYOP. What if Mike the package Mike team? could do it? Mike can do it. Yeah, Mike could do it. Okay, thank you. Um, but it was good. So, budget. Let me make sure this is correct before I say it. It is. Double, triple check. Uh, <laughs> yes, I do. Double, triple check. Move to approve transfers totaling $2,871.01. No, I'm sorry, can I correct that? $2,871.01 no, uh, to the areas listed above here. Point of compensation? Did we? We have a claim, a continuing claim. I think the last bill said it was old. Only up to October, so I'm hoping it's over with right now. So, can we work it was an extension? No, it was just part of the original claim. So, the unemployment is now sending bills quarterly, not monthly, so you can kind of see what's going on. So, um, I did try to dispute it and it didn't work. So, no, the so person was within the claim period, still working here, so they allowed it, and uh, this hopefully should be the end of it. Okay, the next one, grants and subsidies, is that for the Friends of Model Pond? Yes. Excellent. So that's all okay. taken care of. Well, we'll after the that, and then we'll fund that. Okay. Great. Supplies, mm -hmm. like legal notices. We want from legal notices to legal notices. Mm -hmm. Is that legal? <laughs> um, okay, $2,871. Even. Dollars. Even. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 
Uh, move to approve refunds totaling six hundred forty-two dollars and forty-two cents. Okay, these two items. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention. Oh, I'm okay. Uh, I'm, I'm, okay. I'm sorry. Very quiet now. Uh, I move to pay bills in the amount of $61,080.85, consisting of 2223 emergency, 2223 regular, unemployment, credit card, and paycheck. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? Condensing units, that's the um, air AC condensers? Yeah. Yes. 15,000. The fire department? FD? Yes. Yes. Okay. We found one group. Oil. Any other any discussion? All those in favor of paying the bills? Aye. Uh, Are you to give us to anybody? The fire chief tells us the generator is 100K. Yeah, it's 100K, huh? Wow. I was wondering about 50% of the passes would be 100K. Um, anybody have any hands up up there? Um, no. anybody other than that chat, that's it. So. Board member comments. Only one. Have we ever looked into solar street lamps as far as street lights? So that we don't have to pay so much the feasibility of them. I don't know if they've gotten good enough yet to actually stay on as long as I know they weren't they'd be bright enough. Imagine. I just saw, I happen to get a, a thing because we do solar signs. And so I got, and they have solar street lamps. So I'm just like, let me get check into it. Like, like that I don't know. Bright enough. Well, I don't think it's the brightness. I would think it's more the longevity. Will it make it the whole night? Or if you uh, have three rainy nights in a row, you now right. don't have a street light. Right. That, that would be the only thing. If you can tie in electricity and reduce the amount. Let me pay for a street light. It's like $175 a month. How many do we have? But they're here. They look at, they scream at me every month. There's multiple, there's multiple. Yeah. Multiple. Every major intersection has a screen. There's one at the end of my drive. I don't know how it stays on. We don't get any electricity. <laughs> <laughs> Just it's just a thought. I actually think my wife's ex-boyfriend who worked for CLMP put it there <laughs> uh, as a as a courtesy, and yet it cost the town money. <laughs> that wasn't a courtesy. Uh, I know. <laughs> I have if I am, it's coming out of sun. All right. Well, other than that, any other board member comments? No. Okay, so at this time, 8.52, I would like to suspend the regular meeting and go into executive session, and I would ask that everybody up there be let go. And so we're all invited to stay, and uh, Mark Walter invited to stay. So I'll cut off the recording. Yeah. This time we're going to adjourn the executive session and enter back into the regular board of selectmen meeting at 9.34. Um, do we have to vote on anything? Nope. Excellent. Right. Okay. Just we're all set. Just all those in favor of adjourning. Bye. Right. At right. 9.35. Are we